but we're super excited that we finally made it to this moment. It's taken us a few years and a lot of help and support from really a re very, very large number of people and organizations. Center City's thrilled to have the building complete and the first families moved in on October 1st. So to date, we now have seven families who have ended their homelessness and moved in to the building. And we have three more families that are scheduled to move in by the end of the week or early next week. And every day, more and more people get through all the paperwork. So typically, as you all know, we're all gathering in the new building and we're walking through it to see what it looks like. But since we can't do that today, we put together a short video that'll tell you a little bit about the project and show you what the building looks like. So I wanna give a big thank you to Dakota County's communication team who put this video together on our behalf. We surely could not have done it without them and they're helping us with this virtual grand opening, which I can say my technology is not as good as theirs. So let's just take a minute and watch the video. We've been married for 15 years. My journey to Cahill. It's been about a three year journey. Um, me and my family, we um, experienced homelessness. I'm disabled. Um, my husband, um, they laid him off because he was, um, it was the virus that came. So I was pregnant. Um, during this journey, um, I had an IV in my arm. Um, we was, before we got accepted in um, Dakota Woodlands, we were like um, living in a car slash studio with the girls. I'm born and raised here, but everybody's going through their own problems, you know, and I can't just bring a family of five, you know, um, anywhere. So it was very, very stressful. I also suffered from mental health, so my anxiety, bipolar, um, everything was like really at a, at a head, at a head plus the pregnancy. And um, it was just a lot, it was just a lot. I signed up for Cahill about, I want to say six months ago. Um, and recently I got my letter saying that I could come in. So we've been here since October 1st. We were the first residents in the whole building. They love everything. They're like, um, mommy, look at the drawer. I'm like, okay. Mommy, look at the refrigerator. Okay. <laughs> They're like so excited. I love it. I love my view from, um, from my apartment right outside my window it says God loves you from the church um, next door and I wake up and I just see that. We discovered that our building plans uh, for our community meant that we didn't really have a uh, use for the north half of our property and we really wanted our property to be used for the mission of our community which is to help people love God and love people and change the world. And so I reached out to the Metropolitan Interfaith Council on Affordable Housing and told them we would like to sell our property below value to someone who will do the mission that we believe in. It is a tremendous joy uh, to be here and see the lights on and people moving in. Cahill Place is a permanent supportive housing for uh, homeless families who come with a lot of barriers. There's 40 units, all two and three bedroom apartments. People will pay a third of their income towards rent. The idea of permanent supportive is exactly what it sounds like. It's permanent. People can stay here as long as they want, as long as they follow the lease. Um, and then the idea of supportive is we have a lot of on-site supportive services to help people who have uh, really struggled with having any long-term housing stability. We're uh, seeing a lot of families coming from the battered women's shelter and uh, from other shelters. We anticipate having you know anywhere from 150 to 200 people here every single day. Supportive housing developments like Cahill Place are the single greatest housing resource that we need for families experiencing homelessness in Dakota County. One of the um, key things that the Dakota County Board of Commissioners stepped up and committed to early on was um, funding support services on site 24-7 here at Cahill Place um, in order to provide really a, a wraparound supportive service to uh, families that are exiting homelessness and, and moving into a stable home. Um, so those services include things like uh, on-site child care and early uh, childhood learning experiences, um, job search assistance, connection to case management, and a whole range of other supports that are really intended to help families um, not just find stability in their new home, but also to thrive. We have a program called the TOTS program. It's for children birth through six years old. 70 to 80 percent of the children who have been homeless come with some developmental delays. So we have a program that operates at four hours a day 
where parents can bring their children. It's a respite style program. They can bring their kids for 15 minutes, two hours, every day for the four hours. Whatever works for them for whatever needs they have. While children are there, it gives us an opportunity to do some early identification and uh, each child is, gets, a, gets a growth plan and we work closely with the parent and the child to really address through basically a mental health lens because a lot of our children are struggling with executive function and attachment and bonding issues and impulse control issues and so we know if we can attend to some of those they're going to just be more successful when they get to school. We sit down with each adult and, and work through what we call a goal plan um, for them to self-identify really what's right now in this moment important to them and what changes do they need to make. And then we review those on a regular basis. We'll be working with folks to connect them to mental health services, chemical health service and physical health services. Our experience in having other programs like this around the state is that this is massively important for the families who, who come here. When everyone moves in, they're in crisis and they're in trauma, and so their cortisol levels are high, they're not making good decisions often, things are difficult, uh, things are really chaotic, and as people live here, we start to see those the consequences of that trauma start to come down and they have the ability to make different choices and to, and to try new stuff. We see a lot of parents who, who get off drugs, get to work, go to college, really make massive change in their lives. Like this, this place for many families will be the, the place that where everything took a turn and went in a new direction. This next journey in my life, been at Cahill, it's going to be so much better because we have the workers on site, we have the daycare on site, we have we, the girls could play on site. Um, it's just all this help that I'm going to take advantage of. Like I'm trying to be a better me. You know, I just don't want to look at the place. I want to feel like the place, new too. So as you can see, the building turned out beautifully. And I want to thank LHV Architects and especially Kim Bretheim and Andy Madsen for their vision and knowledge on really what to design to meet the needs of the families we house. And the construction team at Frerichs Construction are also amazing. Bob Faulkner and Chad Smith really did a great job managing all the, of the construction with only a few blips because of the COVID. Can we talk about refrigerators and how long they took to come and supply chains? It was a little scary at the end of this, um, but they did come in on time and on budget, so uh, we are happy about that. So we feel really strongly that this building will serve the 40 families very, very well that are going to live there. Um, so I'm sure you know that Center City can't do this work by ourselves. It takes a lot of dedicated folks and multiple years to bring a project like this to fruition. So I just want to take one minute to thank our internal development team who put in many hours and tirelessly takes these projects from idea to completion. This includes our consultants at Ripley Richards Real Estate Development. We're lucky to have Jean and Larissa. Uh, and on this project, we are lucky to have Jean and their knowledge of how to do this is just unparalleled. Um, and a big thank you to the Center City staff who work on our development team and are now working tirelessly, literally 24 hours a day to support the families as they start their new journey at Cahill Place. Um, so we're gonna have a group of speakers who will be joining and talking soon, but, but before I get to them, I wanna just take a minute and thank the Metropolitan Council who also funded this project. This is the first time that we've received support from them and we are super grateful for that. Um, we were also approached by a very caring and wonderful individual who came forward to support this project with a significant donation that helped with the construction costs. Sadly for me, he and his company prefer to remain anonymous, so I can't tell you who he is, but I, but I do want to say that we're very grateful for the support, and I want them to know that what they've done has really made a difference in this community. So I'm going to move on to the speakers. Our first speaker today is Mayor George Torvald. From the first time that we met with him, his support for this type of project in his city was evident. It'd been a long time since Invergrove Heights had built a multifamily housing project and that they were so supportive of this particular project was just really amazing. So typically we get a lot of NIMBY issues when we come into new communities, but we didn't have that problem in Invergrove Heights. And I really think that's a lot comes from the leadership of the mayor. So I wanna welcome our first speaker Mayor George Torville, who, by the way, is retiring really soon. And so we feel really lucky that we got him here today before he relaxes into that easy chair. So, Mayor. Nancy, thank you for the uh, 
actually the compliments to the uh, to the city. I want to thank the uh, city council and uh, the, the planning group, also the uh, engineering group, which had to work. It wasn't the most ideal site, as Nancy knows, and uh, for this for this project and. Uh, some retaining walls and ponding and some other things needed to uh, needed to be done but the uh, the staff at the city for working through and, and don't think there weren't people that said what what are we doing this why are we doing this and uh, again uh, i will say and sum it up that it was the right thing to do and uh, again thank the uh, church um the uh, the river heights vineyard uh, church and uh, pastor benedict um, in taking a look at it doesn't happen often where a property owner uh, says, you know, we, we want to do something really extraordinary. And that is we, we do need some money for the property, but we will sell it below value to make this happen. Thank you very much for your anonymous donor. Uh, and uh, that, that happens a lot in really good projects. And the reason why is that areas and and there are a lot of good people in the state of minnesota that uh take a look at at projects like this and say hey we, we want to help and we don't need a pat on the back or a recognition or a plaque or whatever but we want to help because it's the right thing to do i um thanked nancy a couple of weeks ago um she offered a tour and i took her up on it and uh, in reference to social distancing and masks and, and all of this stuff, and there were still workers there, and there, there was, um, you, you know, it was just, it was great to see. And, and I will say that, um, you know, a, a roof over your head uh, and uh, food and education for your kids, and a lot of us take a lot of that for granted. Uh, it was a reminder to me that it's uh, it's a big deal, and uh, to take a look at um, the apartments and and I will say that um, you know it's it's no Hilton Hotel, and it wasn't meant to be, but but there is a there is shelter, education, uh, daycare, and one of the biggest things, it's going to be safe, and it's going to be safe for the families. Uh, especially for the kids. And uh, it allows us to uh, take a look at some of those essentials that um, will allow these families to uh, kind of regather themselves. And, and as the original uh, move-in guest, uh, a, um, a person said it allows her to be me. And, and that just has to warm the heart uh, and taking a look, but and I will reach out one more time and to uh, River Heights Vineyard, uh, the church, and taking a look at uh, making this uh, making this happen, uh, and being the stimulus to start it, and all of the groups, uh, county, metro council, um, the uh, city and county, Minnesota Housing, uh, to um, get together, and, and allow a good thing to happen. And, and I truly believe that that's why it was so easy to uh, uh, get involved and to take a look at this because it, it's, it's not only the right thing, but it is a good thing. And uh, so I will uh, leave it at there. Uh, if there are any uh, city, I think there may be, I can't see everybody, but city employees and council members and whatever on the call, thank you uh, on behalf of me, the mayor and, and your, um, um, you're looking at this project being a good thing to do for, and again, it will affect a lot of people because there will be people that'll be moving in and the idea is to get them back on their feet and then they move out <laughs> and new families are able to uh, take a look at using this uh, facility. And uh, it, um, it makes it uh, very worthwhile. So again, uh, Nancy, um, uh, thank you and Center City Housing for being the group. A lot of times we have great ideas and projects and, and whatever, but there isn't somebody to grab it and to put the brick and mortar uh, together to uh, uh, have it come out of the ground and uh, provide the space. So thank you. And a lot of you, I see the faces of a lot of people that were involved in this to make it happen. So thank you. Have a great day. Uh, God bless. Uh, uh, Cahill uh, Place and uh, the families that'll be there. Thank you.
Thank you, Mayor Torville. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, and thank you to the mayor and to the, all the city. Um, so we would not be here today if it were not for Dakota County. Dakota County is ridiculously committed to serving homeless families in their county. They provided funds for all parts of this project, including the capital and construction costs, ongoing operations by providing a Section 8 certificate for each unit to ensure affordability for each of the families. And the Social Services Department is funding the supportive services component to ensure the long-term housing stability for all the tenants who move in. The entire county staff are amazing and have helped Center City in just so many ways. There are just too many to list, even though I would like to be able to name each and every one of you. And so I apologize that I can't say everyone's, everyone's name. Uh, both the CDA and the Social Services Department helped navigate us through some very difficult waters. Had Carrie Gill not had the relationships and the knowledge of Inver Invergrove Heights systems, it would have been a lot harder and it really, it really would have taken us a lot longer to get this done. Uh, Madeline Castor and her team helped us navigate relationships with area providers and systems so we can effectively connect our new families with all the systems and supports available in the community. We're really clear that we're new to the community. We don't know everything. We need help. We need partners. Dakota County has really stepped up in a huge way uh, to, to provide us that. Um, but it also doesn't stop with the staff. The Dakota County Commissioners have also been very supportive and approved all of the financial supports requested for this project. Um, so today we have three county commissioners here to say a few words. We're going to start with uh, the chair, Commissioner Mike Slavic, um, then Commissioner uh, Kathleen Gaylord, who represents the Invergrove Heights community, is going to say a couple of words, and she's going to be followed by Commissioner Chris Gerlach, who represents the HRA board. And if you guys want to just go in order and if, or however it works out, I think it'll be fine. That sounds great. Well, thank you so much, Nancy. Uh, uh, as was said, my name is Mike Slavic, the uh, 2020 chair of the Dakota County Board of Commissioners. Uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity just to say a few brief comments about this exciting partnership uh, that we at Dakota County have with, uh, with all of you. Um, for the, about a few years ago now, the board made a priority to address uh, working towards eliminating homelessness. And uh, we've been partnering with local nonprofits, with faith organizations, and even with many of uh, people who are on the call today uh, to find ways for not only emergency shelter for our population, but also for finding permanent housing alternatives and innovative solutions. And what we're here today is certainly one of those innovative solutions. Uh, we all know that it's more than just providing housing uh, for homeless residents and families. It's also about offering those supportive <coughs> services that help that family succeed. Uh, so that they can move permanently away from uh, homelessness, uh, see their children get back on track with their development and education, and for the whole family to thrive and establish roots here in Dakota County. And that's what's so impressive about this project here, the vital pairing of housing with services. Uh, and it's so important with Cahill Place that we're able to find uh, the success of, of our population because it's not just providing a roof over someone's head, but making sure that all of those other aspects uh, they can uh, be successful with at the end. So I just want to thank you again on behalf of the county and you'll hear from uh, my two other colleagues. With that, I'm going to pass it on to uh, Commissioner Kathleen Gaylord. Thank you, Mike. Um, hello, everyone. This is such a, a great celebration and I'm, I'm so glad that, that all of you are able to join us in, in this celebration of this great project. Um, it's obviously a different environment today than it was about a year ago when we um, uh, first had the groundbreaking, but um, it's very good to see that that everyone has joined us. Um, um, as Mike said, I'm Commissioner Kathleen Gaylord. Um, in addition to South St. Paul and West St. Paul, I represent Northern Invergrove Heights um, and the area that includes Cahill Place and the surrounding area. And just on a personal note, as I was watching your video, Nancy, um, there's a greenhouse across the street from this project, and that is the house that um, my aunt and uncle lived in for many, many years. So welcome to the neighborhood. Um, uh, it's an area I, I certainly um, know very well and, um, and uh, appreciate the, um, what's happening here, uh, particularly uh, with this project. And it, it's just, it's such an exciting project to, to come to fruition and and um, particularly in this community, which has such strong partners that have stepped up to help us address the challenges of, of homelessness. And, 
it's clear that um, there's a variety of partners that are that are participating in this today and it's had broad support to to help um, provide stable and affordable housing um, you know emergency housing for homelessness is just that it's it's for emergencies but um, what we really needed were solutions that help um, provide families to come out of homelessness on a permanent basis. And that's what this project does. And that's why it's so special and, and why it's so appreciated in our communities. And, you know, as, as Commissioner Slavic said, um, we have been addressing homelessness as a priority on the Dakota County Board of Commissioners. And it's important to remember that um, the community recognizes the challenges that we face and our, our residents um, have told us this is one of the biggest issues facing Dakota County and so it's nice to have at least a solution to part of that problem and and thank you so much for, for making that possible I just want to thank all of the all of the partners um, uh, particularly Nancy and and uh, Pastor Benedict and so many others that have been a part of this project it, it truly was a group effort and I look forward to continuing our work together to make uh, Cahill Place a model for other communities. So thank you so much and celebrate. It's, it's a wonderful achievement. And with that, I'll pass it on to Commissioner uh, Chris Gerlach. Well, uh, good morning. And it's, it's also great to be here today with, with everyone. Uh, you know, it's not in person, but uh, this is the next best thing in, our, in the new world that we are, we're in. And, and uh, just to be able to, to, to do this, this much is, is just fantastic. And, you know, I, um, as you know, I, I serve on the Dakota County Board of Commissioners. Um, and also one of uh, my additional privileges is I am the current chair of the Dakota County Community Development Agency, which uh, works on uh, both economic development, but uh, housing. And that is the a critical piece of what we do. And, and uh, it's been said a lot about the partnerships involved in this, uh, the River Heights Vineyard Church and, and uh, the city of uh, Invergrove Heights and, and Center Cities housing, of course, among many others. But I, I want to highlight one thing. And, and Nancy uh, touched on it. She said, you know, uh, she used the term NIMBY. And uh, that's the thing, you know, there's let's, all of us who are involved in this, we know that there's, there's broad based support for the concept of affordable housing and helping the homelessness among the public. But the problem is, is that when you, you take that broad based support and then you get specific. And then you want to put something somewhere. And then all of a sudden, uh, the, the enthusiasm starts to, to dwindle a little bit. And, and uh, I just want to point out that that didn't happen here. And, and Nancy mentioned that. And so, George, don't undersell yourself. Um, don't, don't uh, you know, it, it is certainly um, with, with a great humility that, that you put forth yourself at the city council, but, but don't undersell the, the whole idea that uh, what, uh, um, you know, for what you and the city of Invergrove Heights has done by helping to make this happen by not just accepting it, but making it happen is phenomenal. And uh, I just, just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. And that's, uh, that's recognized. So. Um, also, I want to say that uh, there's been support from our legislative delegation. Uh, we have a lot of uh, people from around, the Dakota, around Dakota County that we send to St. Paul. And although we like to uh, beat up on uh, uh, the state legislature or Congress uh, and uh, for all of the failings, I will tell you that uh, behind the scenes, there's a lot of things that happen that do get done, good things. And we have had good support from our legislative delegation, Republicans, Democrats, uh, and uh, making that happen, really, we have a subgroup within our county board of uh, a working group, our legislative working group, and that's chaired by Commissioner Joe Atkins, uh, um, Commissioner Mike Slavic serves on that, as well as Commissioner Liz Workman. And they're our point of the spear in working with our legislators. And they have just done a phenomenal job communicating these needs to our legislative delegation and equipping them with what they needed to do to go to the state legislature and sell this. So this, this cooperative effort has just absolutely uh, been phenomenal. And that's how these things happen. They happen through this, this uh, large uh, consensus and coordinated effort and that, that momentum is going on here. So we're proud to be part of this. We're glad to be part of this. We're gonna continue to be so um, and, and do more what we can. So thank you everybody for all of your parts uh, and, and roles that you've played in making this a success. I'll turn over to Nancy. Great, thank you so much commissioners. Yeah, big, big high fives to everybody. 
So another organization that we need to take a minute and say good things about is Minnesota Housing, who's just really been one of our biggest supporters and has funded every project we've ever done. Um, they provided $6.2 million in housing infrastructure bonds for this project, and we're super excited and a big high five to the legislature for actually getting another bonding bill done because that's what's going to keep addressing the affordable housing issue here in Minnesota. Um, we couldn't do what we do without the support of Minnesota Housing. Their commitment to very low income and homeless Minnesotans is unique and amazing. And we are so, so very lucky in Minnesota to have a state agency that has such a big heart. Um, I also wanna give a big shout out to the staff at Minnesota Housing who really help us through the application and closing phases of these projects. Their knowledge and dedication to getting these ridiculously complex deals done is impressive and we couldn't do it without them. Um, today, we're really lucky we have Commissioner Jennifer Ho with us to say a few words. For those of you who know Jennifer, you know how lucky we are at this time to have her leading the agency because it's, she's really making a huge difference. So I'll kick it over to you, Jen Commissioner. Hi, thanks, Nancy. I, uh, I think it was last summer, I was in a car with Tony and Madeline driving around Dakota County, uh, looking at uh, uh, senior housing, uh, young adult supportive housing, uh, went over to the family shelter and we stopped in the parking lot of a church and stared at gravel. Um, <laughs> and it's so exciting. Uh, Nancy, I'm realizing you probably gave each of us an individual tour in the last couple of weeks. It was so exciting to go down and meet you there um, and be able to walk through the building and, and see, see it fully built out. I, um, I've worked in supportive housing for over 20 years now and the best day is always move-in day. Um, it's when a family gets to drop that label of homeless and just be a family uh, at home. And so a welcome to, to each and every family that's gonna make Cahill Place uh, their home. I, um, I, I also wanted to say that it's an extraordinary uh, demonstration of the power of, of an abstract concept called a housing infrastructure bond. Um, uh, housing infrastructure bonds make communities like Cahill Place possible. And I wanna join you in thanking the legislature for getting a bonding bill done. That's another 100 million of housing infrastructure bonds, uh, the largest housing infrastructure bond in total a housing bond authorization that the legislature has done. Uh, I've talked a lot about going big so everyone can go home. This is what it looks like, uh, what, what you're doing with Cahill Place. So there's a lot of power in these housing infrastructure bonds and I wanna thank everybody who did it. There's also just external power in these partnerships. Uh, Pastor Benedict, we haven't met, <laughs> but I have heard the story told several times uh, of how uh, your leadership, uh, your ministry and your congregation uh, stepped forward uh, to take this piece of land, an unusual piece of land. I think I'm appreciating a, a city on the hill uh, and, and the way that that slope worked. I think Nancy probably learned more about uh, water flow issues and, and things like that in the construction of this project. Um, but to you and to your whole congregation, a heartfelt thank you uh, on behalf of the governor, lieutenant governor, uh, and the state of Minnesota for your contribution to this. The price of land uh, makes the creation of supportive housing uh, a, a really expensive proposition. And, and the, your generosity and leadership in this is just duly noted. So please pass along um, our thanks uh, to your congregation. Uh, but also, I mean, the city, the county, uh, the Met Council, uh, and this is like all levels of government working in concert uh, towards a very good thing. And so to the leadership of the mayor, um, the, the county board, um, your work is extraordinary. I started working with Dakota County when I was the executive director of Hearth Connection, what feels like a very long time ago. And I know your commitment uh, to, um, to, to eradicating homelessness in Dakota County and doing your part. And so I'm, I'm very, very grateful to you. Um, Nancy, Center City Housing uh, is the heart and soul of the work that needs to be done. And, and you know, I've had the opportunity to tour many of your projects and they all just have that feeling, that feeling of home and love and support and opportunity and dreams and, and, and all of that. So. Thank you for your leadership and thank you to your team and, and to the staff who are there at Cahill today helping uh, these new families settle in. The last thing I just wanna say is 
uh, there's probably no time more than these COVID times that we've had an opportunity to reflect on the meaning of home. And, um, you know, I've, I've been in mine for like seven and a half months now. Uh, I haven't gone to the office. I'm finally able to go out and, and do some groundbreakings and some grand openings or less than grand openings um, and events like this. But the meaning of home and what it means to be able to stay safe and take care of your family and, and educate your kids. Uh, you know, I think that the power of home has never been more apparent to those of us who have them and the ability to be able to create them uh, for those who haven't been able to afford them is, is so important. So I just wanna say welcome home to the 40 families uh, that will make Cahill Place their home. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks so much, Jennifer. You just warmed my heart, just the idea of how really important home is now and how easily we can just um, know that just relax in that. And for so many people that it just isn't an option. So as a state, we still have a big lift and a lot to do. Uh, so another organization who invested uh, in this big in this project is the Minnesota Equity Fund. Both Warren Hansen and John Arago and the team at Greater Men has stepped up for Center City and for us again and again and again and again and again, and we appreciate it. Um, they too really understand the need and go above and beyond for uh, helping homeless people. So today we have John Arago, the Director of Equity Investing with us to say a few words. Thank you, Nancy. Um, thank you all for participating today in this virtual event to celebrate the grand opening of Cahill Place. I'm John Arago. I'm excited to be here representing Greater Minnesota Housing Fund and Minnesota Equity Fund, along with our strategic partner, Sinair, represented by Chris Jillings, who's also um, here on the panel. Be saying a few words later. Uh, now, when I say I'm excited to be here, I mean virtually in Invergrove Heights in the lobby at Cahill Place and not my actual location, which is sitting in the bunker that is my basement. Um, I, I watched that sneak peek video and the video playing earlier on this call, and Cahill Place looks fantastic. So, so great work. Um, Commissioner Gaylord mentioned the groundbreaking um, almost exactly a year ago when many of the folks participating today assembled at River Heights Church and celebrated the groundbreaking. And I have a strong recollection of that day. I recall Pastor Benedict talking about how pleased he was to be partnering with Center City on creating such a greatly needed permanent supportive housing in the community. It was like he had found a soulmate in Rick Clun, the former executive director at Center City who retired at the end of 2019 because his timing has always been that good. I remember Rick talking about preparing his remarks for the groundbreaking. I think he couldn't sleep the night before or something like that. He was relating different songs to his feelings at that time about the development process and how arduous it can be. For me, it would be something like the Beatles, The Long and Winding Road. For Rick, it was George Thorogood's I Drink Alone. Rick and Peter, deserve great credit for imagining what could happen, what could be created, the good that could come by putting Cahill Place on the map. Their vision to provide permanent supportive housing and offer services to formerly homeless families was critically important several years ago, but as Commissioner Ho uh, said a moment ago, the pandemic has magnified many times over the connection between having a stable, stable housing, stable place to live, and realizing better health. Cahill Place will be life-saving, literally, for many families. So many of you are valued partners in seeing this vision come to fruition. Dakota County, the city of Invergrove Heights, Met Council, Minnesota Housing, River Heights, Frerix, LHB Architects, Center City. I salute your efforts. Kudos to all of you on a job well done. A special thanks to Nancy Cashman and the Center City team for everything you do in carrying out this important work. You are creating a profound living legacy, housing that will serve people with great needs for decades to come. Uh, Dakota County has been highlighted already, but I wanna uh, do a special shout out to them too. You're a critical partner in Cahill Place. Um, I know there was a study a few years ago that found, you know, 200 families a year requesting homeless assistance going unmet. 
unserved um, because of a lack of shelter space and other resources. And Cahill Place will help some of those families and children. As a resident of Dakota County in West St. Paul, I am proud to live in a place with such thoughtful leadership. I also want to recognize state legislators, the city and other decision makers who prioritize affordable housing. As was mentioned earlier, housing infrastructure bonds from Minnesota Housing make projects like Cahill Place possible. And the, the 100 million um, is a godsend. You know, I think we were all kind of sweating, what's gonna happen if that doesn't happen? What are we gonna do in 2021? And the answer was not a whole lot. <laughs> But, um, but now that the legislature has come through, we're, we're sort of back in the game. So that's, that's great. Um, it's an honor for Greater Minnesota Housing Fund and Minnesota Equity Fund to be a part of this team. Think of all the families today and over the years who will call Cahill Place home. That's, that's what we're here for. Thanks again to all of you. Thanks, John. It was nice to mentioning Rick, we truly wouldn't be here without Rick Klun. I do remember his reference to the song and I was confused, but I don't really know the song that well, um, but it seemed to ring true for him and as typical, some of Rick's kind of crazy ideas is the reason Center City's here today, that he took us down a lot of really fun, amazing roads and, and uh, yeah, we miss him dearly. Uh, so um, Thanks so much for, uh, for your kind words. So uh, the Minnesota Equity Fund also connected us to Sinair, who provided underwriting for this project. We've now done a number of projects with Sinair and we're really grateful for their partnership. Uh, next, we're gonna hear from Chris Gilling, who's the VP of Business Development, and he's gonna just say a few words too. Thanks, Nancy, appreciate it. Um, I'll echo John. Uh, it seems that with kind of the vanishing of the groundbreakings and the rhythm of uh, getting to getting to go and plant a shovel and then cut a ribbon uh, have been interrupted like so many things in our lives by by COVID and uh, Cahill was one of the last ones that I was physically on site for uh, and I remember it vividly it would be far more gratifying today to be uh, walking around a completed site than crawling around concrete culverts that were littering the site and being placed to manage stormwater when we kicked this off a year ago. Um, unsurprisingly, uh, Commissioner Ho and, and John have, have stolen a little bit of my remarks and their non-uniqueness, but I'll proceed with them anyway, uh, because I think they're important themes here. Um, one of the things that we lead with at Sinair is why we do the work we do, uh, and we try to state it as often as we can. And the reason why we exist is because we believe that everybody, all people deserve the opportunities that come from living in healthy communities. And that baseline starts with housing. And particularly when we look at a project um, uh, like, like Cahill and we, we put together a lot of the, the reason why we're doing it. John referenced that report that talked about 200 families a year in Dakota County that were touching the system. Um, and 60 to 90 families that might be homeless on any given night. Uh, in times like these, we're reminded that that number has only grown, if not multiplied. And so this project hitting the ground when it does uh, is only doubly impactful from where it all started. Uh, and as Commissioner, as Commissioner Gerlach had pointed out, uh, oftentimes there's a lot of headwind of opposition, even in an era when we're awake to the cause and awake to the reason. Uh, and awake to the need uh, for the homelessness. And it really takes leadership to push that forward. So from, uh, for a project like Cahill to see so many leaders taking not only the first baton, like Pastor Pete was so visionary to do in concert with his congregation in finding a use for this that was going to have impact that uh, is gonna outlive many of us and, and shine as a beacon for what's needed in the community. Those batons multiply and I think you found a great partner in Center City to carry that. Uh, we really value our partnership over the years with them. Uh, and uh, again, beyond that, it just evolves from level to level. We're incredibly grateful for our ongoing strategic partnership with uh, Greater Minnesota Housing Fund uh, and the Minnesota Equity Fund to do this impactful work in Minnesota. Um, to the mayor, uh, to the commissioners at the county level, uh, to Commissioner Ho for your incredible work that you do at Minnesota Housing to make sure that 
initiatives like the housing infrastructure bonds and the impact that they bring are communicated in impact across the state of Minnesota to the legislature so that they can vote wholeheartedly and vote overwhelmingly to put this funding in place. Uh, thank you to all of you for helping us make our why a reality. And congratulations to Center City uh, for reaching the end of the line on this project. Uh, we're excited to do more work with you. Uh, Nancy, I think that uh, the group could not have landed in better hands with Rick's retirement uh, and our, our continuing gratitude to the folks at River Heights Church uh, for your ongoing support of the people that are gonna call this place home. Thanks, Chris, really appreciate it. I do want to say that somebody mentioned sort of the timing of Rick's exit, you know, a couple months before the Corona pandemic. He got off, he, he hit that easy chair at exactly the right time. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to end our speakers with really where all this began. And now, you know, the tough part of being poor Chris being one of the last, like you, you, people say a lot of stuff that has already been said, but I think it can't, it just can't really be said enough, just the vision, you know, and the dedication that River Heights Community Church had with this and wanting a project in a building like this next door. Like not only is there not NIMBY, there wasn't a lot of NIMBYism, but there's actually was like anti-NIMBYism or the opposite or whatever you would sort of call that. Um, Cause not everybody wants a project like ours, right? And next we, we call door. it YIMBY, Nancy, YIMBY. YIMBY, yes. Yes, yes. yes. YIMBY, okay, I, I, I like that. So I think people know, you know, they they wanted to further their mission across their parking lot. They called Micah, they're like, who, what? Micah suggested Center City somehow. Rick and Pete and I and different folks in Dakota County all got together and converged in this idea. And here we are today. So today we're gonna end our speakers list with really sort of, and I think everyone's eyes where, where this started with River Heights and Pastor Pete Benedict. Thank you, Nancy, and thank you you know, everyone for the part that you've had to play in making this happen. I went out for a jog five years ago and I felt like God said, you could use the north half of your land to change the world. And I brought it up with my staff and council and everybody said, yeah, that sounds great, let's do that. And everyone in our church was on board. And we went to the city and we got so much like support in making this happen, unanimous approval with planning and the city council. A huge thank you to Sue Watla Phillips for connecting us with Center City and Rick and Nancy's vision and leadership and really dogged persistence in overcoming the hurdles that came up along the way for years. That kind of leadership changes the world and thank you. And so we know, um, you know, some of our current church members will probably wind up living at Cahill Place and we love them and they have loved us. We know there are people who are gonna move in, who are gonna be members of our community and who have strengths and gifts from God that are gonna change our lives and we're gonna serve and love together uh, as they come. And uh, this is a watershed moment. This is, I really appreciate um, Chris Jillings pointing out this is gonna outlive us. This is gonna change the world for so many people for so long. And so, you know, as a pastor, I get to give thanks to God at the end here, <laughs> but thanks to so many people who have expressed kind of the love of God in a real and practical way, whatever background you guys are coming from, this is the most wonderful thing in the world. You get to leave a legacy like this. Thank you to every one of you. Yay, thank you to Pete too. So this is our virtual grand opening. I made it through the very first one and it, it was pretty painless. So I am sad that I could not see all of you in real life. Um, I do hope that our world changes quickly, although that seems like a long shot, but we're hoping that a year from now, we could bring everybody in, we could have a big year and year celebration. We made it for a year and, and uh, show the building off and, and connect with folks. Um, so I, again, I just really want to thank every single person who helped make this project happen. I hope that I didn't forget anybody. Thank you all so much for coming and for all the support for Center City. And really, 
really it's, you know, it's really the support for the families and the children and all the people that are going to be living at Cahill. That's really where the support is given. You know, we're just a vehicle through which all of the support and the giving and the money and all of that stuff happens to get to where, what really matters, which are really the folks and the families and especially the kids that are going to live at Cahill and hopefully change their lives. So I want to thank all the speakers for showing up and getting here and getting through the Zoom and everybody on the Zoom call who showed up. We've had over 100 people. I'm super, that's, I, I can't believe it. It's amazing. So I guess these things are better. Oh my God, my battery's running low. I just got a I, message. So if I'm I gonna lose do a, y'all, ribbon, a ribbon cutting, Nancy. I know, we didn't figure out how to. Listeners got a scissors. Yes, do it. I'll hold <laughs> up a ribbon. <laughs> All right. Thank you to everyone for coming. This was great. And uh, we'll see you at the next project. Bye, everyone. Be warm, be safe. Thank you so Thanks much. Everybody. And as Thank Jennifer you. always says, mask up, Minnesota. <laughs> Thank you. So great to be with you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all.